Strange Feeling by David Icecold 960 Phillips and J. W. Except. Last night was the worst. Lightning clashed in the blanketed night. Even after I woke up, I had come to dread the long hours of trying to get back to sleep. It didn't feel normal for a storm to last this long. The shadows and sounds, the comatose, insane existence of silence that kept me out of bed was too much to bear. I looked at my clock, remembering I went to bed at 3.30. The ticking of my clock told me it was 12.45 in the morning. I wanted sleep or some accessible replacement. I looked at the clock once more and started to drift off, trying to float away in that comforting cloud of dream. I was rattled awake, close to another heart attack, throat dry, stomach muscles tightened from quick, sudden fear as some blast from the sky came from that intimidating and horrifying storm. No, there was a knock on the door and not the impreaching storm. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but it felt wrong. I guessed maybe a tree, fallen branches, or otherwise. A scraping from some corner of the house. Just as I and my wits had been walking down the stairs, the knock struck once more. Sometimes the incoming thunder strikes returned with every knock. On the other side of my door came rack after rack, and with each rack came the inane pounding of my very heart. I flipped the light switch only to find the power was out. I grabbed my flashlight, edging towards the door, thinking it was just Ned from next door asking for something again, but it wasn't him. It was someone I had never seen before. Charles John Evans. He spoke his name. It wasn't right. I didn't know this name. He seemed familiar, though. The storm wouldn't let up. Being kind, I let him in. Soon he was upstairs and entering the guest room like he had been in my home before. After a while, I followed after the man and entered the room. I asked him who he was. He replied with, I used to live here. He paused. The house hasn't changed. He stopped again. I looked back at him, staring at his dark and raw red eyes in the darkness of the room. You're in danger. He finally broke the silence. You need to leave. Now. What? Danger? What are you talking about? I replied. If you stay, you will die. Afterwards, he left the room and ran down the stairs and out into the rain. The strange feeling cycled down to a minimum, but I blew off his warning, edging the long hall to the kitchen. I felt a puzzle would pass the time, as I was never going back to sleep. I forced myself to sit, regulating my breathing, listening to the faint echoes of the thunder, uneasy, loud, and sickening. I lit a lantern and began my Sudoku game. I heard a strange noise, like that of a growl coming from upstairs. I grabbed the lantern and my gun from the shelf. Above it all, strange and not too beneath the range of hearing, was the eerie noise from earlier as I climbed slowly up the stairs. The sound became louder and louder as I inched towards the unknown and questionable sound. The tone shook the hallway to its walls, rising up through to my heart, rattling my bones and nerves. There was no escaping it. The way to the guest room. The noise had come from that room, as unfamiliar as it was. 
the noise converted into screams of terror. I listened to the sounds drawing me in, shaky breath, and the tone it took as I came closer. The familiar man from earlier was before me beyond the darkness. Charles, his body was maybe an inch off the ground. I still heard that low, steady thunder of the storm. One more unnecessary reminder of the situation I was in and the stranger floating in silence. I don't remember ever believing in ghosts until I saw the man in the shadows. Slowly, I turned from the room quietly and hoped he hadn't heard my booming heart. Who's there? He knew now. That was it, really. Only thing I could do was clench my eyes tight and pray the creature didn't see me as I was leaving. Forcing myself, I finally had opened my eyes. Charles was in front of me, staring deeply into my vision. Now I couldn't move either way, despite the fight. Now he'd locked me with his eyes. No more than inches away, and I could do nothing at all to him. He reached for me, breaking his gaze, falling through me as I ran toward the stairs. I heard the thunderous noise continue. It carried on indefinitely, echoing right outside until... You can't run! It was Charles' voice right behind me, loud, and I flinched a little at the sound of it. I thought about what Charles had said earlier, about leaving my home, and... And maybe that face, that dark, stricken, and horribly ghostly, shadowy profile was right. I fell down the stairs, twisting my ankle, but still I pushed myself and cried out in pain as I crawled towards the door. Looks like you hurt yourself. Don't worry, the pain won't last much longer. <laughs> He laughed, standing in front of me. I stood, and the spirit ran to me. Then everything went white. I woke up in my bed, screaming. Ah! Someone was coming up the stairs. I slowly opened the door to see who it was. I thought to myself, this is very familiar. I looked down at my feet and saw that I stood a foot off the ground. I screamed. Someone outside walked slowly away from the door. I followed to ask him what he was doing in my house. I stood in front of him, hoping I wouldn't scare him. What I saw shocked me. The person I was looking at was Charles John Evans. He looked at me, smiling, and said, I told you, you should have left before it was too late.